Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode seven of Conversations for the Common Good. Today, our topic is work-life balance. Again, I'm Raquel Webb. I'm at the St. Joseph Market and I'm joined today by Mac Prater. Mac, tell us who you are and where you are. Well, I am the uh, Mission Integration and Spiritual Care Coordinator at uh, Patients Medical Center in Pasadena. Beautiful downtown Pasadena, Texas. Wonderful. The uh, CHI Texas Division location here, St. Luke's. Wonderful. Well, I am enjoying my tour of Texas through all the mission and spiritual care leaders, and I appreciate you being here today. I heard this morning when I was driving into work, the, new ca the newscaster say, um, we've been in this life upheaval for six months now. And I just stopped and I was really struck by that word upheaval because it's really true, right? COVID has been this disruptive uh, thing that's changed our lives, caused a lot of upheaval. Um, and that's why we launched this series. We wanna to respond to that uh, thing that's happening within all of us. Uh, even right now, as we start to get back to a little bit of normal, things are still difficult. And Mac, today we chose the topic work-life balance. What is work-life balance? Start us off. All right. Well, basically, in a nutshell, it's how, uh, as the name implies, we balance our life between our work responsibility, the time that we spend at work, and then the time that we spend with our personal lives outside of work, our activities, our family, relationships, hobbies, interests. And um, a lot of us struggle with that, right? If we're honest with ourselves, because uh, it's not an easy term to define necessarily. And it's even harder for us to achieve because it doesn't look the same for every person. Some people are more, um, uh, for some people, it's much easier to come up with that structure to where they have a ha healthy balance in their life uh, between work and their personal life. And then there are others that, um, that it's, it's a challenge because of the demands of work, the demands at, at home. So that's really what it's all about. Uh, Matthew Kelly, there's a quote I wanna share from Matthew Kelly who says, work-life balance is not an entitlement or a benefit. Your company cannot give it to you. You have to create it yourself. So with every individual, we all have to come up with our own balance. Right. And so as you were talking, I was uh, just thinking because of what's happened with COVID, even <clears throat> with our CHI employees, a lot of the ones not providing direct patient care have been working remotely. So I wonder um, if with more and more people working at home, does that make it easier or make it harder to maintain this balance between work and our personal lives? Yeah. Well, actually, the uh, unexpected shift of having to work remotely as a result of COVID-19 has taken a, a toll on workers' mental, emotional, and spiritual state uh, on, our, uh, on our mental health uh, because it's a struggle to find, for a lot of people, respite. I mean, if you're working from home and you're also living at home, uh, having those uh, defined boundaries are much more difficult than if we're getting ready in the morning, driving to work, going into the office or going into our place of work, and then at the end of the day, putting our stuff away, getting in our vehicles and driving home again. Those, uh, those create you know, nice, healthy boundaries mentally for us to kind of say, okay, I don't know if you've heard people say this, but um, a lot of people say, well, when I leave work, I leave it all behind. Well, when you're working from home, it's hard to do that uh, because those boundaries uh, aren't there. And uh, something else that uh, has recently complicated work-life balance is hyper-communication through the technology that we have available to us today. We're always on, right, 24-7 to accept phone calls, text messages um, from work, uh, email, answering email while we're at home but it's work related, but we feel compelled that we need to, to answer those emails, text messages, and phone calls. So it's really the overuse of technology that can wreak havoc on our personal lives if we're not careful. 
Yeah, and I've heard one of the struggles that we've had here at St. Joseph's is our employees who go home, uh, but they can't leave the work at work. And when they're home, they're often checking work email or they um, can't disconnect, right, from their minds from work. Uh, and that affects how they sleep. It affects all of their lives. Um, but I really liked that quote you just shared by Matthew Kelly, because what you're saying is it isn't something that work can do for you. It's something we have to do for ourselves. We have to develop the ability to make this work for us. Um, <clears throat> and in, in thinking about this, if we don't accomplish this, what are some of the adverse effects of us not maintaining a healthy work-life balance? Well, whether we work uh, entirely uh, at our place of employment or we're working remotely from home, uh, the negative effect is uh, of a uh, unhealthy balance between our work life is uh, pretty much the same, whether we work from home or we work in our, in our places of work itself. And, um, and that, that issue is chronic stress. And we've got a couple of slides here to, uh, to address the issue of, of chronic, chronic stress, if you wanna pull those up on your screen. So the first one we see is hypertension, um, digestive problems, People can suffer from, from headaches, chronic aches and pains, heart problems. So there are a number of health-related issues that can come as a result of having an unhealthy balance between working uh, and our work life and our home life, no matter, no matter if we're working from home remotely or if we're working in the office. There's another slide I wanna present to you because not only uh, is uh, is, is that an issue, but also chronic stress emotionally can have an impact on us as well, not just physically, but also emotionally. Uh, we could run the risk of uh, greater uh, chance of having depression, anxiety, guilt, and insomnia, not being able to sleep at night. And on the issue of guilt, uh, most parents that I speak to have struggled with this because you know you want to be there for your child's special days, the sporting events or uh, recitals, those kind of big days in your child's life. And um, if you don't maintain a healthy balance of trying to manage, okay, these are my work responsibilities and being able to leave work at the right time to make it to these special events at home, it can cause a lot of uh, guilt. I should be at there at my child's event, but, but doggone it, I just can't break away from this special meeting that's going on or whatever happens to be going on at work. It's a struggle. It's hard to strike a balance. Right, and I, I just saw insomnia there at the end as well. And I can say I, I can't sleep some nights and I have a lot of um, nurses, even physicians will tell me that some of the stress really keeps us from sleeping at night. So um, what, what if some of our viewers, Mac, are seeing these symptoms and signs and they're like, uh, we're feeling like we're there, but we don't wanna be there. What are some ways that we can hop onto the work-life balance movement and how can we achieve better work-life balance? Sure. Well, striking a balance uh, between work and personal life is an ongoing challenge for most all of us, and it's something that we have to uh, be intentional about. Stephen Covey, I'll uh, share a quote from Covey. He says, uh, the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. And I like that. I think it speaks directly to scheduling our priorities, whatever's most important to us, uh, make those the most important thing. So I suggest making some uh, small and deliberate changes. For example, um, if uh, you don't mind putting some more, uh, another one of those slides uh, up for us to take a look at. So here are some, uh, here are some tips, some keys. Of if you work, for example, particularly if you work remotely, and that is remove yourself from unnecessary group chats. Um, doesn't matter if it's a Slack or GroupMe or whatever, if it really doesn't pertain to you, 
then uh, then I recommend asking to, to step out of that group. Um, next thing is to decline unnecessary meetings. Of course, we want to run it by our supervisors, our bosses, to make sure it's okay with them because we may feel like, well, why am I even in this uh, meeting? I don't know why I'm in here because it really doesn't relate to my job. But as being a part of your team, uh, your supervisor may feel, no, I think it's best for you to be in that team. So always check with them first rather than just kind of saying, well, I'm just going to ignore that meeting, right? Uh, the next thing is to schedule breaks. Uh, if, if, if Particularly if you are working remotely from home, uh, have certain times at, during the day, break time in the morning, break time in the afternoon to actually get away and do something else for a few minutes and then return back to, uh, back to your uh, uh, workstation at home. Uh, be intentional also about changing your clothes. I think that that's really helpful. Sometimes we, if we're working remotely, we just want to wear our pajamas all day, right? And, uh, and, and then there are, I mean, I'm sure most everybody has tried it at least for a, a few days. Um, but it's, I think it's good for our mental health if we make that uh, kind of a somewhat of a, uh, a transparent barrier uh, of saying, okay, I'm getting up in the morning, I'm going to keep my same routine. So I'm going to get up do my regular routine, I'm going to, you know, take my shower, I'm going to change into more professional or more work clothes, and then I'm going to go to my station at home and work from there. And then at the end of the day, intentionally changing into your comfortable clothes, rather than just wearing the same, you know, PJs or whatever all day long. And finally, I think it's helpful if you have a sort of a virtual drive home uh, you're not really driving home at the end of the day, but at the end of your work day, uh, jump in the car, drive around the block a couple of times, maybe go to a park, chill out for a little bit, uh, and then jump back in your vehicle and then drive home as to simulate the uh, differentiation between home time and work time. Uh, all of these are just some, uh, just some ideas of, of hopefully to help in this process. And I think we've got one more, uh, one more slide, if you don't mind uh, sharing that with our audience. Here are some more tips that no matter if we're uh, working remotely or we're at our place of work to keep in mind. Number one is eat well. Our diet has a, a lot to do with our physical health, mental health as well. So if we eat right foods, if we exercise, uh, try to take time to relax, and, uh, and uh, just some R&R, &R, very helpful. Laugh, uh, I can't overemphasize that one. Laughter uh, is like medicine. Milton Berle, uh, the quote from him, and I realize some of my, our audience today is saying, Milton who? <laughs> <laughs> but a comedian from uh, back in the day, or a comic, he, he uh, was often heard saying that laughter is like an instant vacation. And, and I really like that quote. But there's a passage of scripture out of uh, the book of Proverbs, and it's Proverbs 17, 22, as being a chaplain, you know, I've got to throw a scripture in there every now and then. Of course. <laughs> and that is uh, Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Mm. And that's pretty graphic, but I think it's true. Uh, so having a joyful heart, knowing when to laugh. And I, I like to uh, watch a, a funny movie, uh, maybe one I've already seen. If I feel like, you know, I need a good laugh, uh, is I'll, uh, I'll watch a funny movie that makes me just kind of have a belly laugh, you know, and I already know it's my go-to movies. Um, and, I, and I watch those movies and it really, it really helps. And then uh, finally, if you really feel like you're struggling, and you've tried, you know, working on your diet, exercise, relaxing, laughter, and it still seems like it's, uh, it's getting the best of you, then seek professional help. Um, we know we have EAP that's available to all of our employees. If you don't know that contact information, then check with HR, or you can check with one of your chaplains. And also, don't forget the support of our chaplains uh, at each of our locations to sit down and have a conversation with them. Awesome, awesome. I, I already was thinking I 
I work in the hospital, so I work, I, I drive to the office, but every time I go home, I try to change my clothes and that helps me. So I, I like what, what you're trying to help people there. I also, um, you know, I've shared that here at St. Joe's, a lot of people have the, the addiction to our phones, right? And we're checking email and late into the night. And do we really need to do that? And so um, many, many months ago before COVID, um, I was at a hotel and on their little bedside, they had a little bag and it was labeled a sleeping bag for your phone. And um, I thought that was pretty strange and I, it fit my phone and I put it in there. And it really was to encourage that, uh, put your technology away and get a good night's sleep. And I have that bag and sometimes when I go home and I really physically and mentally feel that I need a break from work, I will put my cell phone in that little sleeping bag from 5 p.m. to maybe 8 p.m. And I'll do other things um, that really are the home part, right? Focus on my family, maybe cook a nice meal. And it's those little things that are really going to help, I think, to get our work and, and our, our uh, home life in balance, our personal lives. Yeah. Mac, thank you so much for your expertise, especially uh, reminding us that it's okay to seek help. Actually, it's important to seek help. And so uh, remember your chaplains, remember your EAP, um, and also your chaplains can refer you to other um, helps in your own community that, that could um, provide you with resource. So from, from all of us in Division of Mission and Spiritual Care, we wish you well and hope you will join us next time for Conversations for the Common Good. Max, say goodbye to our viewers. Uh, Raquel, it's been a pleasure and I appreciate the invitation to spend some time having this conversation. Hopefully we'll, um, it'll strike a note with some folks and uh, be, be of some help. We want to we want to really make sure and that's really what this these conversations are about is trying to help all of our employees so thanks for giving me the opportunity it's been fun absolutely be well everyone bye-bye